Good afternoon and welcome to Fortress Press Live, where we connect you with the people and passions behind the books we publish here at Fortress Press. Our guest today is Gail Yi, and we'll be talking about her work on the recently published Fortress Commentary on the Bible. Gail, welcome to Fortress Press Live. Hi, how are you? Very good. Why don't you take a few moments and introduce yourself to the Fortress Press Live audience? Okay, I am Gail Yi. I am Nancy W. King Professor here at Episcopal Divinity School. I've been here since 1998, and before that, I spent 14 years at the University of St. Thomas in St. Paul, Minnesota. And also during that time, I was director of their women's studies program at St. Thomas, but also at the Associated Colleges of the Twin Cities, ACTC. I directed their women's studies program before I moved here. Well, thanks for that brief introduction. We're really excited, obviously, around here at Fortress Press because we just released the Fortress Commentary on the Bible. Tell us a bit about your role in that project. Well, I was on the advisory board with Dick Horsley and Neil about doing something that would make the Bible relevant, particularly for dealing with contemporary issues. And in fact, when I signed on, I thought we were going to be primarily focusing on the contemporary issues. And then I found out we were doing that three-layered, the historical level, the reception history, and then the contemporary issues. I was very involved. I got most of the authors that are in the Old Testament section, contacted them, plus a whole bunch of others who were not able to do it. And that's where I've been, just steaming on ahead from that perspective. Well, and that's one of the things I noticed in looking through the commentaries. We actually got some copies here in the office last week. One of the key features is kind of that sort of rhythm or layout of the text you're talking about. Uh, the text in its ancient context, the text in the interpretive tradition, and then the text in contemporary discussion. Tell us about your thoughts on working through the text in those three different ways. Okay, the first one was Ruth, and that I found very easy because I've written on Ruth. It lends well to what I do in my own studies, doing it from racial, ethnic, and gender issues, and you can see all of that in the book of Ruth. First and Second Kings. It was originally for Norman Gottwald, and I was going to do the one on introduction to the historical books, which is what he did. So when I talked to him about doing the commentary, he says, oh, I've never written a commentary. So I says, well, look at how about if we trade, you do the historical books, and I will do First and Second Kings. And he agreed with that. I actually learned a lot in doing that commentary. It got me into particularly the prophets Elijah and Elisha, which I thought was absolutely thrilling to study. And it got me into in-depth on the history of later Israel. I have been doing work on that, particularly in my work on poverty in ancient Israel, and how the institution of the monarchy was a contributing factor to poverty in ancient Israel, frankly. And so it was good to read that history and then also read the archaeology behind it, the social history behind it. And I got a much clearer understanding of the history of ancient Israel in doing that First and Second Kings commentary. So the hardest part for me in that section was the more interpretive level B, the reception history part. I was helped there by a book that had many commentaries by ancient writers on First and Second Kings. And that was also very interesting to find out that First and Second Kings, there was a lot of commentary by ancient Christian writers on that. But the stories of individual kings, there wasn't much. The big ones, Hezekiah, perhaps Josiah, but all those other kings that nobody knows about, neither did a lot of the reception history, which was very frustrating. Now, for the contemporary issues part, there was a lot to talk about, I felt. The abuse of power, the exploitation by the upper classes of the lower classes, the whole notion of empire, and even if Israel was as strong as the Bible presents it to be, they were in no shape to counteract the Assyrian Empire and the Babylonian Empire, and, uh, and then eventually the Persian Empire. So it was that history that I found very 
enlivening and illuminating. All right. Well, thanks for sharing about that. You know, a couple of things I thought about as I was paging through the commentary is the chapters aren't overly long. And I think sometimes when people think of a commentary, they can get a little nervous that it's just going to take them for, forever to read through a section. I'd be curious to get your thoughts as you were working through uh, the different pieces that you contributed. Who is the target reader or audience that you had in mind? This audience for me are primarily seminarians who might have something, I mean, in the Episcopal Church, there's something called EFM, I can't remember, Education for Ministry Formation or something like that, that had some experience with the Bible, but most of my students had no experience with the Bible, and then undergrads who had no experience with the Bible, but they think they know what the Bible is, okay? So, my primary concern was to deal with what they will encounter first, all right? and what needs historical explanation, and also what they will encounter particularly, again, my, my interests were the contemporary issues part. So, what they will, when they get to the contemporary issues part, what I would focus on is particularly seeing that thread through the different layers. So, yes, I kind of felt it was interesting to do First and Second Kings and what was it? 8,000 words or something like that. I can't remember what, what it was, but it was impossible. So I primarily focused on where I saw the themes I want my readers to pick up on in that immense detailed book, which, I mean, First and Second Kings is very, very detailed, very complex. All these kings, all of these wars, what did I want students and seminarians to highlight and not get bogged down with? Well, and I find that really encouraging um, with the work I do. I talk to quite a few different professors on a regular basis, and that seems to be one of the challenges a lot of the professors are facing today, where their students are coming, whether that's in undergrad or at the seminary level, and they have minimal to no exposure to the Bible. So it, it's exciting to see a, a resource that can help fill that gap and really help the students hopefully hit the ground running a little bit faster. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, folks, uh, it's time to bring this episode of Fortress Press Live to a close. If you'd like to find out more about the Fortress Commentary on the Bible, you can visit fortresspress.com or you can check out the show notes for this episode, which you'll be able to find at fplive.fortresspress.com forward slash 013 as this is episode number 13 of the podcast. Gail, thanks for being generous with your time this morning and for being a part of this episode of Fortress Press Live. Okay. Thanks for being a part of my conversation today with Gail Yee. To view the show notes for this episode or to leave a comment, head over to fplive.fortresspress.com forward slash 013. While you're there, be sure to check out other episodes of Fortress Press Live and subscribe to the show via SoundCloud. Until next time, this is your host Sean Tabbitt, signing off.